It was two days to the Passover and to the festival of unleavened bread. And the chief priests and the scribes tried to figure out a way that they could arrest Jesus by stealth and kill him. But not during the festival. Oh no, not during the festival. There could be a riot. And we can't handle it. Now, while Jesus was in Bethany at the house of Simon the leper, as he sat at table, a woman came carrying a jar of ointment of pure nard. A woman with an alabaster jar. She broke open the jar and poured the ointment on the head of Jesus. Now there were some present who were speaking together in anger, saying, why was this expensive ointment used in this way? What a waste. It could have been sold for more than 300 denarii and the money given to the poor. And And they they scolded scolded her. her. Who does she think she is? What a waste. Really, what were you thinking coming in here like that? How dare you touch Jesus in that way? But Jesus said... Let her be. Leave her alone. Why do you torment her so? For she has done a beautiful and good thing for me. For the poor you will have with you always, and you can show them kindness whenever you wish. But you will not always have me. You will not always have me. This woman has done what is in her power to do. She has anointed my body beforehand for its burial. And truly I tell you, my friends, that wherever throughout the whole world this good news is proclaimed, what Mary has done for me will be told in remembrance of her. In remembrance of her. In remembrance, remembrance of her. But Judas Iscariot, one of the twelve, he went to the chief priests looking for a way to betray Jesus to them. They were delighted and they promised to give him money. From that moment, Judas began to look for a way to turn Jesus over to them.
we join together in the gathering words. The one who was ridiculed and rejected calls us together. His ministry was built on the twin towers of justice and mercy. We join together in our opening prayer, praying, Loving God, we gather this evening to remember the trials that Jesus endured in his final hours. As a person filled by your spirit, he sought to share your love with all who were in need. His devotion to you and his love for the unlovely placed him in conflict with the religious leaders of his day. Their fear of him 
led them to undertake their evil deeds. Great God, we give thanks that Jesus could remain faithful to your ways, even in the face of death. We pray that we may find strength and courage from his example to face the trials that we encounter. Amen. On the first day of the unleavened bread, the day they sacrificed the Passover lamb, the disciples went to Jesus and asked, Teacher, where shall we celebrate the Passover feast? Jesus said to two of them, Go into the city, and you will find a man carrying a large jar of water. Follow him. He will go into a house, follow him into the house, and ask the master of the house, Our teacher wants to know if you have a room where we can celebrate the Passover feast. He will show you an upper room and make preparations there. So that evening, the twelve and Jesus all gathered in the upper room. And they began to enjoy the feast together, eating. But Jesus said, Truly I tell you, one of you will betray me. Lord, not I. Lord, I would never do that. Lord, what are you talking about? Truly I tell you, one of you who is dipping bread into the bowl with me will betray me. For as it is written, the Son of Man comes, but woe to the one by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. That one should have never been born. The Lord be with you. <laughs> Lift up your hearts. Eternal God, we thank you that you are as near to us as our breath, and that your love for us is constant and unfailing. We thank you for your amazing creation and for all that feeds, nurtures, and sustains our lives. Especially we give thanks for your Son, Jesus Christ, who showed us that the way to live is to love and to serve you faithfully. On the night of his betrayal, Jesus gave his disciples a new commandment to love one another as he loved them. Write this commandment in your hearts and give us the will to serve others as he was the servant of all. Gracious God, we ask you to bless this bread and this cup. Through this meal, make us the body of Christ so that we may join with you in promoting the well-being of all the world. Now hear us as we join our voices together in the prayer he taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. I will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And as we forgive our debtors, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power, and glory forever. Amen. While they were eating, Jesus took the loaf. He gave thanks to God, he blessed it, and then he broke it. And he gave it to each one, saying, Take and eat. This is my body. It's broken for you. Whenever you do this, remember me. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks,
he poured and said, Drink all of it, all of you. For this is the cup of the covenant, sealed by my blood. Truly, I tell you, I will never drink it again until I drink it on the new day in the kingdom of God. We will receive the sacrament this evening by intinction. We ask everyone, wherever you're sitting, to come up the center aisle for our guests. We take the bread, dip it in the cup, and then take the sacrament. If you would like the pre-assembled bread and cup, you may have one of those that are in the baskets.
we join together in the prayer following communion. Holy God, we thank you for this feast of grace as we have been served. Help us to serve our neighbors. As we have been fed, help us to feed all who are hungry. As we have been loved, help us to love the world. Because in Christ Jesus, you have loved us. Amen.
because it is written in the scripture. I will strike the shepherd and the sheep will scatter. But after I have risen, I will walk ahead of all of you to Galilee. But Peter declared, Jesus, even if all fall away, I will not. Verily I say, Jesus answered them, tonight, yes, tonight, before the rooster crows twice, you, Peter, yes, you, you yourself will deny me three times. Peter insisted emphatically, Jesus, even if I die with you, I will never disown you, never. And all the others, said the same. And all the others said the same. Jesus and the disciples went to the place called Gethsemane. And Jesus said to them, sit here while I pray. And Jesus took with him Peter, James, and John. And he began to be deeply distressed and troubled. And Jesus said to them, my soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. Please stay here, keep watch. And going a little further, Jesus fell to the ground and prayed that if possible, this hour might pass from him. And he continued to pray, Abba, Father, Amma, Mother, God, God, Everything is possible with you. Take this cup from me. Take it from me. Please, take this cup from me. Yet not my will. Your will be done. And Jesus returned to his disciples and found them sleeping. And he said, Simon Peter, Simon Peter, are you asleep? Could you not keep watch for one hour? Just one hour? Watch and pray that you might not fall into temptation for I'm telling you, the spirit is willing, but this flesh is weak. Once more, Jesus went away to pray, saying the same words. And he returned 
and found the disciples sleeping, for they could not keep their eyes open. Their eyes were heavy, and they did not know what to say to him. And returning a third time to pray, Jesus came back to the disciples and they were still sleeping. Jesus said to them, Are you still sleeping and resting and sleeping and resting and resting and sleeping? Enough! The hour has come. Look, the Son of Man is delivered into the hands of sinners. Rise, get up, let's go. Here comes my betrayer. Now, as Jesus was speaking, Judas appeared. He was one of the twelve. With him came the crowd carrying swords and clubs. They were sent by the chief priests, the teachers of the law, and the elders. Judas the betrayer had arranged a signal. The one I kiss is the man. Arrest him and lead him away under guard. Judas went quickly to Jesus and said, Rabbi! And he kissed him. The men came and seized Jesus and arrested him. Now, while that was going on, 
one of Jesus' followers drew his sword and struck the servant of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Jesus said, wait, am I leading a rebellion that you need swords and clubs to capture me? I have been with you every day, teaching in the temple courts, and you didn't arrest me. But the scriptures must be fulfilled. Then everyone deserted him and fled. Wait a minute, I almost forgot. There was this young man wearing nothing but a linen garment following Jesus. And when Jesus was seized, this young man fled naked and left his linen garment behind. guards brought Jesus to the high priest. And all of the chief priests and the elders and the teachers of the law came together. Now, Peter had been following Jesus. And he followed him right into the courtyard of the high priest. And there he sat with the guards and warmed himself by the fire.
Now the chief priests and all of the Sanhedrin had been trying to find evidence against Jesus so that they could put him to death. But they hadn't found anything. Many stood and testified falsely against him, but their statements did not agree. Finally, several of them stood and gave this false testimony against Jesus, saying, we heard him say, I, I heard him say, he's going to, I'm going to tear down the temple, he said. I'm going to tear down the temple built with our hands. And in three days, I'm going to build a new temple with no hands. But their testimony did not agree either. Finally, the high priest stood before them and asked Jesus directly, are you not going to answer? What is it with these charges that these men have brought against you? But Jesus was silent and refused to answer. And the high priest asked again, what am I to do with you? Who do you think you are? Are, are you the Messiah? The son of the blessed one? I am, and you will see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of the Mighty One and coming on clouds of heaven. Well, at this, the high priest was beside himself, and he ripped at his clothes. He ripped his microphone right off. <laughs> And he said, we do not need any more witnesses. You have heard this blasphemy. What do you think? And they all condemned him as worthy of death. And then some of them rose and went to him and spit on him and they tied a blindfold around his head, and they started to beat him with their hands, and they yelled, prophesy, prophesy. And then the guards led him away and beat him some more. She said, but he denied it. I do not know or understand what you are talking about, he said, and he went out to the entryway. When she saw him there, she said to the people around, this fellow is one of them. Again, he denied it. A little while later, 
those standing near to Peter said, Surely you are one of them, for you are a Galilean. He began to call down curses, and he swore to them, I do not know this man you are talking about. Immediately, the rooster crowed the second time. And Peter remembered the words that Jesus had spoken to him. Before the rooster crows twice, you will deny me three times. And he broke down and wept. Made, made their plans because they were so threatened by this Jesus. So they bound him and led him away and handed him over to Pilate, the governor of Judea. Pilate asked Jesus, Are you the king of the Jews? You have said so, Jesus replied. Don't you see all the things that they're accusing you of? Don't you want to defend yourself? But Jesus still made no reply, and Pilate was amazed. Now, it was the custom at this Passover festival where they were for Pilate to release a prisoner who the people chose. So the crowd came up to him and asked him to do for them what he usually did. Do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? For Pilate knew it was only out of fear and envy that the chief priests had Jesus handed over to him. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd to have Pilate release a different prisoner, Barabbas, an accused murderer, instead. Well, what should I do then with your king of the Jews? Crucify him! Why? What crime has this man committed? But they shouted all the louder, Crucify! Crucify him! So Pilate, wanting to please the crowd, released Barabbas, the murderer. As for the innocent Jesus, he had him flogged. 
and handed him over to be crucified. The soldiers led Jesus away. Into the palace that is the praetorium. They put a purple robe on him and they twisted together a crown of thorns. And they put that on him. The soldiers who had been gathered together, the entire company, began to call out, Hail, King of the Jews! Hail, King of the Jews! Hail, King of the Jews! Again and again, they hit him on the head with the staff, and they spit on him. (laughs) Falling on their knees, they paid homage to him. And when they had done mocking Jesus, they led him away. To be crucified. Now there was a man from Cyrene named Simon, father of Alexander and Rufus. And he just happened to be walking by on his way in from the country. And they forced him to carry the cross. following behind the soldiers 
led Jesus to a place called Golgotha, also known as the place of the skull. And they offered Jesus a painkiller, wine mixed with myrrh, but he wouldn't take any. And then they nailed him to the cross. They crucified him. And the soldiers divided up his clothes, casting lots to see what each would get. Now, it was nine in the morning when they nailed Jesus to the cross. And the charge, the charge, the written charge was Jesus, King of the Jews. There were two criminals that were crucified along with Jesus, one on his right and one on his left. And all those passing by yelled at Jesus, not the criminals, just Jesus, screaming at him, you, Jesus, come down from there. You, you, who was going to destroy the temple without your hands and then build it in three days without your hands. Come on down now and save yourself. And in the same way, the high priests and the teachers of the law mocked Jesus amongst themselves. Well, he saved others, didn't he? And he can't save himself? The Messiah? He says he's the Son of God. Well, why doesn't God come and save him? If he would come down from that cross, then maybe we would believe. And even the criminals hanging beside Jesus mocked him, hurling insults at him. At noon, darkness covered the entire land until three o'clock in the afternoon. And at three o'clock, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, Lema Sabachthani, which means my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Some of those nearby who heard him said, Listen, he's calling out to Elijah. Someone else ran and got a sponge, dipped it in vinegar wine, put it on the end of a staff, and offered it to Jesus to drink. Leave him alone now. Let's see if Elijah comes to take him down. With, With a loud, loud cry, Jesus, Jesus breathed his, his last.
the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. And the centurion, who saw everything, said, Surely this is the Son of God. And from a distance there were many women who were watching him. Among those women were Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James, the younger of Joseph and Salome. In Galilee, there are women who looked after Jesus and uh, cared for his needs. And there were also women from Jerusalem. It was preparation day, that is, the day before the Sabbath. So as evening approached, Joseph of Arimathea, a prominent member of the council who was himself waiting for the kingdom of God, went boldly to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Well, Pilate was surprised to hear that he was already dead. Summoning the centurion, he asked him if Jesus had already died. After learning from the centurion that it was so, he just gave the body to Joseph. So Joseph bought some linen cloth, took down the body, wrapped it in the linen, and placed it in a tomb cut out of rock. Then he rolled a stone against the entrance of the tomb. Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Joseph, saw where he was laid. <laughs> 